Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool washer electronic control board. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new electronic control board. The electronic control board is located in the bottom of the washer and it controls a lot of the functions for the motor. The main reason to be changing it out is if your washer is not working and you've inspected the board and found a burnt spot indicating that it's failed or you got an error code telling you that it's bad. In order to get to the part, we have to go around back. Now that we're around back, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to remove all the screws that hold the back panel on. There's two screws on each side that have a cutout around them. You don't want to take those out because those don't hold the panel on. As you're taking the last screw out, you want to put your leg against the back panel so it doesn't fall off. Once you have all the screws out, you want to carefully lower the panel down so it comes out from behind the drain line. Once you have it lowered down, you can pull it off and set it aside. Now that we have the back panel off, we have access to the electronic control board. It's over here in the left side of the washer in the bottom. In order to make it easier to get access to it, we're going to take the support bar off. So we're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to take out the screw on each side that holds it in. Once you have the screws out, you have to lift up on the support bar to get it off the frame. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. First thing we're going to do is reach in and take the drain hose off. All you have to do is lift up on it to release it from the clip. Once you have the hose disconnected, we can start taking the wiring off. We need to begin by removing the wires from this clip and this clip to give us some slack. All you have to do is press on this to open it up. Then you can open it and get the wires out. And then we're going to take the wires out from underneath the clip that's on the control board housing. Once you have the wires out of the clip, we can go down and disconnect all the wires from the electronic control board. These all have some sort of locking tab on them. We're going to start at the top with the blue wires. This has a locking tab that we're just going to use a small flathead screwdriver to press on. Once you have it released, you can pull the wire out. Then we have the all black wires with the ground wire here at the bottom. There's two locking tabs that you have to press on to release it and pull it out. The ground wire has a locking tab on the bottom, so we're just going to get in there with a small flathead screwdriver and release it. And the double pink has one locking tab on it. Once you have all the wires released, you want to make sure that they're outside of this cutout right here. Before we take the electronic control board off the bottom of the washer, you may want to make a note of all these wire connectors. We're going to have to take these off of this panel and put them onto the new one so you can take a picture of it or write it down. To release the electronic control board, all you have to do is use a flathead screwdriver to lift up on this locking tab. Once you have the locking tab lifted up, we can push the electronic control board towards the front of the washer. Once you have it slid forward, we can lift it up and pull it out of the washer. Now that we have the electronic control board out of the washer, we have to take a look at the feet. We're going to bring in the new electronic control board. They've redesigned it so the feet are a little bit different. So this housing won't work for the old one. So what we're going to do is swap out the control boards right here at the washer. In order to do that, you just have to take a screwdriver and release these two tabs to lift the control board out. Now if you have to swap out your housing, you have to take off all the electrical connections and we'll show you how to do that too. We're just going to use a small flathead screwdriver to release these locking tabs so we can lift it out of the plastic housing. 
once you have the tabs released, you can just lift this side of the control board up and pull it out of the housing. Once you have the electronic control board out, and if you decide you have to change the housing, you're going to have to remove these electrical connector holders. We're going to use our small pliers to reach in and release them. Once you have all the wiring harness clips removed, you can pull the housing out, and then we'll just stick the control board back in it. Once you have it put back together, you can pull it out of the washer. Here's the old electronic control board next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. If you have to swap out your control boards, we're going to have to release the control board from each housing. We're going to do it the same way we did when we took out the wire harness holders. We're just going to use a small plated screwdriver to press in on the release tabs and lift up on it. Once you have the old one out, you can lift it out, set it aside, and we can carefully release the new one. Once you have it released, you can put the connection end in first and then snap it into place. And we can put the old board in to the new housing. Once you have the control board swapped over, we can put it into the washer. To put the new electronic control board in, we're just going to feed it through the opening of all the wires and line up the feet. Once you have all four feet in their openings, and then you can push back towards the back of the machine to lock it in place. Once you have it snapped into place, we can reconnect the wiring harnesses. Remember, all you have to do is line these up and push them in so they lock into place. We're going to start with the back one first, which was the one that came from the center of the tub over. And all you have to do is push it in to lock it in place. And then it came down and hooked into the bottom. And then we had the other wiring harness that came from the water temperature sensor. And then the main wiring harness that goes up the side of the machine. Once you have this one snapped in place, we can follow it up and hook these back in and close this clamp again. Once you have all those reinstalled, we can reconnect all the wires to the electronic control board. To reconnect the wiring harnesses, remember they all have locking tabs and little tabs that allow them to only go in the right spot. So we're going to do the double pink, which is on the bottom first. All you have to do is press it on and make sure you get a good connection. And then on the next terminal was the grounding wire. If it's a little hard to reach back in there, you can use a small pliers to connect it. And then we had the large connection with the one ground and all the black wires. And then up at the top we had the all blue wires. Once you have all the wiring harnesses connected, you want to make sure that the wires are routed through the little holder. Once you have all the wires in place and secure, we can reach up and snap in the drain hose. To put the drain hose in, you want to make sure that the flat spot on the hose is lined up with the clamp, and then all you have to do is snap it in. Once you have it snapped in, we can put the sport bar back on the washer. To put the sport bar back on, you want to make sure that the locking tabs go in the square hole on each side. Once you have the locking tabs in, you can let the sport bar go down and then we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the two screws that hold it onto the washer. Now that we have the sport bar in, we can put the back panel onto the washer. Remember we have to make sure that this little cutout goes up 
behind the drain hose. So you want to line that up and lift it up into place. Once you have it in place, you can use your foot to hold it. And we're going to put this screw in to hold it so we can put all the other screws in. Now that we have the back panel on, we can plug it back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.